Hey, thanks. Video three in the how do we add value to our favorite customer process? How do we do it? Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to share a tool that we created for ourselves on accident a really long time ago. And it's evolved into something much different than that, that we feel that will help you potentially as well as your customer. So let's jump in. If you haven't seen the other videos, that are complimentary to this one, because this is one, or this is three, or this is the third of three. <laughs> uh, jump on that, the links are below. I'm gonna move my head, because I gotta. All right, I'm gonna put my head over here. So, very important, this document is not intended to replace a settlement sheet from your real estate agent or title company. However, it is intended to help you better understand the numbers that have a direct impact on your net after the closing is complete. Okay. What's your name? What's your phone? What's your address? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. And we, again, we did this, this, this thing happened on accident because uh, as you know, not only did we do traditional real estate, we also bought and sold properties on our own. Okay. So when, again, when you put yourself in the position of the other person, you get a new perspective. And I personally believe that this particular information, if nothing else, just helps you think about putting yourself in their shoes but it could also help you, I think, if you turn this into a tool of your own that you could tailor your own way. You you have this download now, so you can do what you want with it to some extent, right? But um, we feel that this is this is this is good stuff, right? This is transparency of the this is real life. We think, at least from our experiences, and and if we made some mistakes in here, we apologize. But the intent was to have this be. Um, to have this be thorough for our own use in the beginning and, and now to add value to someone else. So here we go. The traditional transaction with a projected sale price of 350000 okay? So what we've done here is go through many of the things that are in what we would consider a typical settlement statement or settlement sheet, right? But then what we did is we've added in some a few real-life things that aren't necessarily always in the quote unquote normal HUD one or settlement sheet, whatever you want to call it, right? So we have the sale price of 350. Then we have a mortgage payoff of 250. Okay. And we, we just go down the line here, right? So we have the PITI is X. Okay. And then do they have a HELOC or a credit line or a whatever that would be incorporated in this process? If they do, great. Actually, let me stop myself and I'm going to go to the bottom because yellow is manually entered, white autofills from manual entered, this auto calcs and this auto calcs. So I just want to go back up. Okay, so yellow we are manually entering. Okay, that's the point here. So nonetheless, what's the monthly electric bill? What's the monthly gas? What's all these things, right? Like these are real expenses. This is real life stuff that if a person's gonna sell a property, they don't go away just because they raise their hand and say, okay, I'm gonna list my property, right? So with that said, they are part of the bottom line, part of the net, all right? Now, this is just a random thought as I'm talking here as to a way that this could be part of your conversation with someone, which is that a lot of listing agents have a hard time working with their sellers in terms of deciding on a price. So a typical scenario is that the listing agent says we should list for X, and the seller says uh, X plus a few thousand, 10,000, 20, whatever it is, right? So this could be something, I'm not necessarily saying this is some convincing paperwork that's going to help you make sure, but it's just, it adds credibility to you wrapping, being aware of what's going on. And it's just part of a conversation to add value, right? Not to mention if you give it to them, um, it could, it could add credibility and so on and so forth. But Having this be a part of showing them that you think about them is a big deal because these holding costs for five months, which in some areas are going to be for sure, right? Depending on if they price their house properly or not, is, is something to think about, okay? So nonetheless, here we go. So of the total monthly mortgage holding costs in this box, we have 11000 bucks total mortgage payoff, two hundred and fifty. okay? Now we're going to go to the next one. We have special assessments, deed tax, recording fees, annual taxes, uh, annual taxes to escrow, blah, 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 municipality fees. And again, some of these things you're going to see on a normal HUD, right? 
Okay, lending costs. So when they go to sell, there's this crazy thing called seller paid closing costs, okay? Now, we've, we've thrown in a little bit of context for you over here on the side. You can put in whatever you want, right? But nonetheless, um, in our experience, seller paid closing costs are in the majority of all transactions. So why pretend like they're not, right? They, they dramatically affect the bottom line. So talk about them. Don't pretend they don't exist. I mean, that's, I, I don't know. Anyway, that's how that goes. So anyway, there's the math, right? Now here's some other expenses. So what we call pre-list repairs are repairs that happen before you list. So depending on the property, you know, um, let me go on a side tangent here. So um, as I've mentioned before, prior to being a licensed real estate agent way back in the day, I got this college degree in construction management and got a job building houses. So we built um, a lot of houses and we, so I had the opportunity to build a lot of houses in a pretty short amount of time. And so every one of them got sold, right? Well, I, maybe not a few at the end, but um, of the roughly 100 houses that I purchased, um, I would be working with the the buyer. I had to meet the buyer, okay? And we would, you know, they'd bring an agent and they would bring a inspector, okay? So these are br literally brand new houses, never been lived in. And so the reason that I bring this up is that even, <laughs> even with brand new houses, the inspector would come in and they would try to pick it apart and get us to do all sorts of stuff. And this was a, a national home builder, which um, depending on the market cycle, they don't negotiate a ton and we didn't. So, but they would even try to do that in those scenarios, right? So my point of bringing it up right now is that when it comes down to repairs, I personally believe that even just putting in a number here and having the conversation about it, of, of the conversation that I just had, even if you just retell my story that happens to be true, it could add value to your potential customer, right? And the reason that it is, is because in our experiences of being the actual seller, as well as our, our experiences of working with sellers, is that listing too high can be a problem. It can be a big, big, big problem, okay? And it can hurt people financially more than listing too low almost all the time, at least in our experiences, right? Going fishing um, it isn't something that I would advise, and that's just me. Maybe you're just way better at what you do from from uh, convincing people to buy your listing standpoint than I am in terms of all this, but that's been our experience, okay? So I bring this up, um, number one, because it's just real life. If you're selling existing properties, then there is some sort of um, potential need to do some pre-list repairs. We put this number in here um, somewhat arbitrarily, but you know, inspection items, we've seen them get pretty crazy, okay? We have inspection items down here to bring it back up again in a second. But depending on your neck of the woods, if you have really expensive properties, you know, if you I'll call really expensive from 600 up to 1.5 million. So say in a $1.2 million property, 14 grand of repairs just to get it ready to list it, that's nothing because that's just painting one floor, all right? Um, and just a side note again, a lot of these properties need to be updated with paint colors that aren't insane. So nonetheless, it's a way for you guys to have a conversation. And if you just want to throw this thing out, that's cool too. But this is us having a real life experience being a seller as well as real life experience being an agent and just throwing some context into it because these are real. The, people do pay at one point or another unless they are fortunate enough to get a buyer that likes the property that they have right now. Okay. So nonetheless, I'll get back into it. So pre-list repairs, we put an item in here for it. If you want to put in zero, that's up to you. Um, but nonetheless, we have the next one, which is staging and how much that may or may not cost, depending on your particular neck of the woods. And then showings, every single showing, the property needs to look great, right? So um, whether it's an open house or whatever, whatever it is, um, there's a cost to making your house look fantastic, um, even if it's just cleaning it. And you're, it's your time because you had to take off a little extra for lunch or whatever it is if you're the seller. Okay, then there's inspection negotiations. So again, um, I put this in there that, you know, if you do some pre-list repairs, the hope is that you don't have a long and lengthy expensive list on your negotiations, but that doesn't mean that you're gonna. I mean, again, I was selling 
way back when I was the contractor on brand new properties and they would still bring things to the table. They're brand new, right? So just keep that in mind. And then appraisal negotiations. I put a zero in here, but you guys have all seen this stuff, right? The appraisal comes in at X because of whatever. And now that's just a reason to talk about money, basically. So just put that in there as a conversation piece to let know that sometimes that's a negotiating point, okay? Now, hopefully you're an amazing negotiator and we can keep this at zero, but to at least have the conversation, I think is a great way to do business, okay? Homeowner warranties, um, maybe y'all can find them cheaper. I, I think I've seen them in the threes, um, but nonetheless, put a number in there for that. We got title, we got closing fees, we have the real estate agent fees, okay? So we have both sides, we put 2.8 for each, okay? We have the total and the 2.8 for each. And then we have um, broker admin fee, which in our neck of the woods is a very common thing. Well, disclosure, all these other fees. So the total other expenses in this particular section, other expenses, was $40,200. For a total of all of them of 65000 Okay, so, so this person, let's paint the picture. Let's go back. We're talking, they want to list for three fifty. dollars They're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get hundred grand." Would you agree that pretty much everyone says that? Be honest. Okay, maybe not. But for the most part, everyone's like, oh man, my payoff is 250, 100 grand in my pocket. I'm gonna just be partying, okay? So even if we take out these things that may not apply, the 14,000 and the 2,000, or I don't know if staging isn't a thing, but whatever, even if we take those out, it's still a lot different than it is of my payoffs 250 and um, I'm, I'm going to sell it for 350, right? Just having this conversation, being upfront, is I guess basically what we're advocating with this. So at the end of the day, the estimated seller proceeds with this particular exercise is 34,000. So there was a hundred thousand dollar gap in list price versus payoff but only a $34,866.67 gap that the person potentially can put in their bank account. Now, do you think that most customers understand this? That's why I say what I say about just real estate math, because this is just real estate math. And quite frankly, we might be leaving stuff out of here. I don't, I don't know, but we, we tried really hard to have this be thorough again, because it was created for our own net sheet on properties. But I, I, I personally see a lot of value in this. If you don't, that's again, very cool. But uh, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions on this, um, again, there's links below, go into other videos. There's also one where you can schedule a free consultation call with us um, and talk about how you could potentially work directly with us if you'd like. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna see you on the next one. Thank you so much for your attention and have a great day. Get out there, bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.